for joining us today for Your Real, Your Ideal. We're excited to have this conversation today. Sandy, um, we're going to talk about our ordinary lives, <laughs> which is synopsis with boring. No, right. Boring. Ordinary, boring. <laughs> it's a kind of the same thing. Um, so how's your day going, Sandy? You know what? My day is going well. It's funny, you know, when we do podcast day, uh, I start thinking, you know, I think about it during the week because we talk about what our theme is going to be and we both have our brains energized. And as I thought about today's theme, um, and, and getting my computer ready to, this morning, I thought, you know, my ordinary days today versus when I had the kids, when I was that young person uh, in college or starting work. So I just, I have a confession to make. So my ordinary day, which was pure bliss, is I got up at uh, gosh, I think the alarm went off at 530. I have been trying to finish a book that I'm absolutely loving, but because of vacation last week and I did two book club facilitations, I had a lot of reading to do, but I had two and a half hours of uninterrupted reading, uh, a great book called The Homegoing, um, uh, and loved every second of it. And then I got up to a very full calendar, but it was Others would might say it's boring, but you know what? It was my ordinary life and there was nothing more blissful. So uh, you introduced the concept or not the concept. You, you talked about the theme for this week, Amy. So that's my ordinary life. And you give yeah. us the synopsis on what, what, what our discussion's about. Yeah. So I'm just going to tell you that's kind of my ordinary life too. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big reader. And so every evening the right now, the way um, our time is, because there's not a lot going on in the evenings. And I mean, we're still kind of hunkered down. And in Omaha, the weather's starting to change and it's getting cold and dark in the evenings. And we've had some rain lately. So uh, I've been reading a lot too. And I read in the evenings. You know, I sit in my chair, turn my lamp on, and I'm there. I can be planted for three hours every evening reading a good book or reading a book. It doesn't even have to be a good book. So That sounds blissful to me. I know, it, but embracing this ordinary seems, um, you know, is I'm okay with it right now. I'm wondering how it's going to be through the winter though. Right. As we're, you know, looking at I, like over the summer, we were able to go out on the patio and sit by the fire pit. Right. And I'm already beyond that. I'm like, it's too cold outside. <laughs> <I'm staying Right>. <laughs> and we're not going to be able to gather with friends as much outside now that winter's here. So trying, so the goal of today is to um, share the ordinary and also embrace the ordinary and hopefully um, get us with some strategies to get us through the winter on how to celebrate the ordinary. Right, right. And that it's interesting uh, when we, I, I feel like when we look ahead, we can worry about it or say, wow, what am I going to do? How's that going to work? But you end up finding your blissful ways to fill the days and things that you don't necessarily uh, are able to verbalize. But when you look back and you talk about the sweetest memories, they're usually the ordinary. Right. You know, they're those ordinary moments. It's those special things in time. And so I love the conversation because sometimes I think we do fill our calendars too full or we try to add new things because we're worried that we're going to get bored or not be stimulated or not have enough uh, interaction when if we just let us fill our days, we're naturally going to fill them with things we enjoy doing, you know, it's, but it's easier said than done, especially given, you know, the options today, you know, Amy, you talk about Omaha being cold, you know, I used to love, you know, having the uh, Creighton basketball tickets, you know, that was a great way to fill our time and get socialization and it was on the calendar and, you know, going to events and, uh, going to Broadway shows, they had great venues in Omaha that just filled that time when it got dark at five o'clock at night. And, you know, walking the dog was a chore, not a joy. And there's a great unknown in what that looks like. 
this winter. There's a huge unknown. You know, I don't even know the answer to Creighton basketball on if they're going to, I don't know if they know the answer. I What's that going to look like? Answer. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. And so finding the um, joy and sitting in my chair seven days a week, reading my book, you know, is that going to get tedious? Am I going to still enjoy it come February? <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, I love to read. I, my question would be more, um, are the people in my house going to be annoyed that I'm still in my book in February? <laughs> it does annoy Garrett a little bit because when I have that reading time, I'm um, not annoyed. He should be. You know, I get a little bit, um, I'm enjoying it, but I am savoring that time. And I know that at exactly 7.45, I need to be showered and ready and on a call. So I don't really like to have a lot of interruptions. So I have to remind myself of that too, that don't be so <laughs> sacred with your time that you're taking away from the spontaneity of the moment with the people around you. Right, right. Yeah. Other than adult. people that are emailing and texting, they can wait till I'm done. Right, right. <laughs> It's about priorities. Who's important? About priorities. <laughs> and that darn phone, that's a much easier thing. I got to put that down. And uh, it's okay to take two seconds when he, because he brings me coffee and warms it up the entire time I'm reading in the morning, by the way, too. So, oh, how nice. And the dog snuggles in. It's just a beautiful, like, one time we'll, we'll have conversations about bucket lists. And I'll say, gosh, you know, to read, to read, to be able to read all these books that I have on my list that I haven't had time to get to. He's like, that's not a bucket list thing. And my comment is, well, it's my bucket list or going to music or not music. Well, I would go to music festivals. I like to be entertained. I like movies. I like music. I like Broadway. That's the kind of stuff I would do. The moments, you know, back to the moments, the moments, it, you know, it's interesting that that would be on your bucket list because most people think that, the extraordinary stuff should be on the bucket list, the once in a lifetime stuff, but really the stuff that uh, makes a difference in our lives. I mean, that once in a lifetime stuff, stuff is great and should be celebrated, but celebrating those, um, getting to read all the books you want to read and, and having the conversations with your kids and your spouse and anybody else important, having the time to do that should right. also be celebrated. So speaking of conversations, uh, as I was reflecting on this ordinary life, and I'm like, I was thinking about the conversations. My mom has almost always lived out of town. And so, you know, we have our phone calls. And when my kids were little, um, she never really wanted to hear about uh, their, their awards or their accolades or their, you know, the great things they were doing, or if they were playing soccer or, the, you know, she wanted to hear the personal stories. She wanted to hear the oh, comrades and she wanted to, um, like I was always noticing. It was funny because it made me notice the funny moments with my kids and made me think, oh, I can share this with mom. She'll enjoy this story. And so it was really helpful for me to um, focus on enjoying the ordinary and being able to share it with her and celebrate it instead of um, celebrating, you know, the, the accolades and stuff like that. So that's helpful. And that's something we can do for people right now is being asking them about the ordinary moments and having those conversations. You know, Amy, what's uh, you bring that up and I'm thinking back now we're thinking about raising kids and a couple of things that really came to mind when we kept saying ordinary days was the fact that I started a blog. I would tell you it was probably 12 years ago that I started a blog and I, it was called, or it is, you can find all the stories. There was one year I wrote every day for a year, but tales of the ordinary days and where it came from, you know, I've always loved to write, but a friend and blogging was just starting. And a friend had read a book that was called tales of the ordinary days. And the woman in the book reflected and she it was a kind of a poetic read, but she reflected on the ordinary moments in her son's life. Cause now they were grown. And my friend said it so reminded her, her of me because sharing those stories like you shared with your mom, that's when I would be, you know, 
show the joy and the excitement of the ordinary days and the stories of my boys. So I started writing them. And yeah. the interesting thing when I look back, because of course you look and um, I, I, I got picked up in the Omaha World Herald probably a dozen times because they had, and I don't know if they still do, they had a section called Mamaha and they would feature some of these stories, but the ones they picked were not about uh, some glorious moment of winning, you know, I guess, I guess one was winning a state championship, but it was more the moments and the build up to it, not the moment of winning. It was the moment of, it was the stories and the ordinary lives and days around it as they intersected, but it was always the ordinary day stories, the funny moments, the thing that happened in the, the, the time Ben uh, took Garrett's jeans off of the, uh, the drying rack and wore them to his job cleaning out ditches for the oh. county because they were Felix and Oscar, the odd couple. One was clean, one was messy. And it was the story behind how they interacted as Felix and Oscar and Garrett's reaction to that and those moments. But those were the ones that resonated with people and still resonate today. And back to your mom, I love it that she verbalized that and that's what she wanted to hear. Because if I look back in time now, and if I think of, uh, well, social media today, which shows those big highlights, the reveal party, the prom, the 500 pictures, don't they look beautiful? You know, all those pictures that we're representing of our family and kids to everybody else, that used to be the Christmas card, okay, before we had social media. So if I looked at all the Christmas cards I put out, which is what we feel inclined to tell people back to having conversations, none of that stuff. I can't, can't think of anything that really mattered in those Christmas cards about here's what they're playing, here's what grade they're in, here's how they're doing scholastically, always a good pianist. It was right. the stories I wrote in the blog that are the joyful memories. And right. so, <laughs> not throw away the list, but throw away the Christmas letter. I know. <laughs> We do have some friends who write a good Christmas letter, but it's usually from the perspective of like the dog and the well, dog. That's great. So it's clever and funny and not the typical it, Christmas letter. It Here's not, all of our, it's not a resume of the family. No, it is not a resume. It's hilarious. Awesome. It's the dog or one year it was the, a yard ornament, like a, a gnome or something that's in the yard. It was hilarious. Okay, Amy, you bring up something really good though. Humor. Humor, oh my God. Humor, gosh. humor in the days, humor in not taking yourself so seriously, humor in your interactions with each other, you know? <laughs> Garrett saying, laughing, going, oh, she's got her book, you know? I gotta, <laughs> finding humor in our moments is a big part of those things, isn't it? Yes, yes, I, I completely agree. And the funny, the funny stuff that happens is usually the stuff that, is memorable and um, you know in the sweet stuff but yeah the funny like I remember funny things my kids have said over the years and it's just stuck with me right I'm gonna go back and read my journals I wrote uh before I blogged I basically wrote things down in journals not so much in story form but I talk about the day and I always write down the funny things that they said or the funny things that happened and then you know life happened and I kept on moving and then I got to blogging and um, uh, I got to thinking I need to go back and read those journals. So do you still journal? I do but because uh, I still journal um, I tend to journal when thoughts are in my mind and then I'll write them down whether it be a LinkedIn story, a blog story, summer stories for later. Um, I don't I used to journal more like a shorthanded diary and then blogging took over from that and I stopped journaling. And then in a masterclass I took, they said, don't just write when it comes to stories, write every day. I would tell you, Amy, I don't write every day, but I journal probably three times a week. And usually my head is spinning. I try to do it first thing in the morning, but I, I, I am back to journaling again and it's a great activity. I, so I've never been a journal journaler. Um, I've tried over the years. It's always been overwhelming to me, but I just thinking through this, I think this time is a really good opportunity to pick it back up. And I just recently heard a tip of um, write a minimum of one sentence. And like, I think he even said a maximum of three sentences so that you can do it every day, but it's not 
you know, it doesn't have to be a whole blog. It right. can just be a minimum of one sentence. I, I, that's what resonated that. with me was the minimum of one sentence because I'm like, don't put right, any pressure on yourself. I know that's doable. And it could just be, oh, I enjoyed my walk today or um, uh, it was raining today or, you know, it could you be know, like me apologizing to you about, I don't journal every day. That's okay. You know, yeah, I'm not going to put that pressure on myself. I do journal when I, I, I right away, I, I, if I, if my, I'm more overwhelmed with a feeling or a thought, or I'm feeling relaxed, I'm done reading. I don't have a meeting right away after my coffee mm -hmm. to finish. I get that journal out, but I don't, we shouldn't put so much pressure on ourselves that those ordinary joyful things end up being a chore. And then we, what do you do when it becomes a chore? Then you don't do it and you feel like a loser, right? Right. And it's like, what's the point? Yeah. And you feel guilty and no, <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm going to say it. So now that I'm thinking about it and you're like, I write when I think of stuff, um, I actually do too. Now that I think about it and I wouldn't call it, I always just put it in my notes mm -hmm. and it's usually when I'm out walking, this is actually hilarious because I'm having a moment of, oh my gosh, I've been journaling and what happens is when I'm out on my walks, I'm listening to a podcast and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is something I want to capture. And so I'm like, I open up my notes and I, I talk into my phone and I'm like, okay, remember this, or, you know, this is a good idea, or I'm actually trying right. to capture that stuff. So that's so. how you capture it. I was going to ask you that. I struggled with, I was always, when I walk, I walk Zeke. And if I listen to a podcast, I always have ideas and it's hard to, you know, stop the dog, but right. you talk. That's that's your mechanism is you leave yourself a message or you dictate it. I dictate it into my notes. So you I open up my notes and I hit the little microphone and I talk and it'll jot the note for me. Because you can even put the time if you want to go back and re-listen to what triggered that. I like that. Why I never thought of that. Because I would I'll find myself putting off, I tend to listen more now to audiobooks because I was getting frustrated with myself because I'd stop the podcast because I'm like, I don't want to lose this part. And then I'd go back and that's one thing about journaling too, is it's yeah, good yeah. to do it when it's fresh and top of mind. Cause sometimes you go back, it's like, what exactly was I feeling when I heard this? Because mm -hmm. it could be a mixture of what you hear and something that's fresh in your memory of what you see. And I do, do you lose that if you don't write it right away that, you know, you had a strong feeling, but it isn't yeah. as fresh completely. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Dealing with ordinary times and the mind like slipping. <laughs> right. Right. But one thing that I'm enjoying about these ordinary days is the time to think. Um, I was just working with a client the other day and his schedule is usually so cram packed and we were revising his schedule because some things are shifting and some things are opening up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, now you have some time to think and process. So let's, let's not schedule. Let's have some blank spaces in our calendar and keep them and honor them so that, um, cause a lot of times in regular busy life, we are just so busy. We don't, have time to think, to process, and to plan future stuff. We're just reacting. And so I am enjoying this time and getting to process and plan and so look forward and build. One of my biggest pet peeves, Amy, is when people, when, when I'm asked the question, what do you have going on? And let, let it be work. Let it be Garrett because he needs my time for work or a, a function outside. And the feeling and interpretation that if my calendar is not jam packed, that means I have nothing to do or that I can, it's open for whatever anybody else has for me or that that is not as important. And I'm only, I'm telling the story because I, I think it's worthy of telling because it's a good thing. We have a lot of people who, whether they be divorced or they interact with other people, um, when I first went through my divorce, when my ex-husband and I were trying to figure out, um, the kids were younger and we were figuring out visitation times. You know, I had my weekend, he had his. He was very busy. I was very busy with work, but my social life had come off a little bit and I was dating Garrett. So when I was home, I tended to just play with the kids, do things with the kids. And I loved it that way. 
Well, he was really busy because he had a lot of different activities going on and he would have his calendars jam packed, which was great because they enjoyed it. But he would often ask me on my weekends, what do you have going on? And I learned, don't tell him, well, I'm just, you know, nothing or I'm hanging out with the kids because then he would start taking them or saying, oh, I've got something better. You know, my whole family's going to the zoo or uh, we, we have tickets to the circus. And it trumped my doing nothing. And finally, it just, it upset me, not toward him, but I needed to stand up for myself and say, rather than saying, I have nothing, okay? So I'm blaming myself for this too, because it was a communication thing, like, you know, I, I would kind of fight it passive aggressively. And I finally was able to articulate, I'm going to play with the kids this afternoon. We're gonna take an afternoon and I think we're gonna have some friends over. But then I didn't have to tell them all the details, but be able to articulate that my time and those ordinary days were meant so much to me. And that didn't mean we weren't doing anything or that I didn't deserve that time with the kids because it was not important. And the same thing happened with work is I learned to articulate that just because I, I, made, I needed an afternoon to catch up, I needed an afternoon to take all these notes I had written down and rather than being a little passive aggressive about it when people said, hey, cause you know, you share calendars, you looked at your calendar, you're open, we're gonna add this hour long meeting is I learned to articulate that I actually, I'm, I'm booked at that time. It might not be on my calendar, but I have put that time aside for something that's important to me. And right. that's a hard thing to articulate. So you think it's easy, but it's not easy because you feel like you have to show something or tell exactly what you're doing and how it's more important than whatever it is that they're going to fill your calendar with. Right. Um, it's interesting because I've had a busy week this week and in the evenings. My days have been pretty quiet, but I've had something going on Tuesday, Wednesday, and then I have something going on tonight too. That's not normal and it hasn't been normal for a long time. But um, it was kind of funny last night or maybe Monday, I was looking at the calendar. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be able to tell Tom. I have stuff going on this week. I'm like busy every day. <laughs> and it was, it was like, okay, so, and it's ordinary stuff. Like one was a work appointment. Then one was another actual work appointment last night. Oh, and tonight's another work appointment. So it's like work, but it's not, um, I've just, my evenings have been so quiet. Oh, right. And so it's I was been quiet. Now they're full. Yeah. These this week. Next week, it's not. Next week's completely quiet. <laughs> That's not my normal. So, and typically my evenings are uh, pretty sacred, but now that my days are a little bit more open, I'm like, all right, sure, I'll do evenings. Um, but it was interesting because I found myself being excited to feel productive and to have something going on because that's what I'm so used to, if, you know, pre-March. And so, um, it was an interesting to catch myself being so excited to have stuff going on. Right. It's, right. It, it goes funny. both ways, right? Right. Right. <laughs> but, but do you think the moral of the story is we have to define what it is that fills our days? At the end of the day, we're making those decisions and it's how we communicate them and yeah. what we say no to and what we say yes to, but it really ultimately falls on us. And being, you know, I said I was kind of passive aggressive, I'd actually be a little bit bucky about it too. That really doesn't come to a very good end when you're uh, struggling with, when you're struggling with something and then you put those struggles on somebody else. Right. Time, every time I hear of someone dying young or something happening, somebody gets a bad uh, diagnosis, uh, they lost their job, or what have you. It's like t time is so important. Life is so fragile. And it's one thing we have right now and we should be greedy with it. And ordinary does not necessarily mean boring. Right. So <laughs> to that point, it's funny because I think about that quite a bit on my evenings right now. And, you know, my son, I'm sure he's like, oh my gosh, all my mom does is sit and read her book every evening. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, is this the memories that I want 
him to have of me is, you know, because when they were younger, I was busy with them, but now I'm not. And um, I'm coming to the realization that, yeah, it's okay for him to be able to look at that and say, she was very content. She didn't have to fill her life with stuff that wasn't meaningful. She did what she loved to do. And I'm hoping that's what he would say. He's, that's probably not what he's saying as a 17 year old, but you know, maybe in 15, 20 years it will be. But um, I'm hope, I hope that I'm projecting that, that there is joy and just being and celebrating the ordinary time. Don't you think, Amy, that that is um, so apparent when somebody is, even if they're being ordinary or if they're just leading their life, to me, it's very apparent when they are in that Zen area of their life, regardless of what they're doing and that that vibe comes off. I know my kids could probably easily go back in time. And even when I went through those years early in my divorce, where I tried to make paint a beautiful life when I was struggling a lot. Um, I'm sure I painted this beautiful life. We did all these wonderful things, but they knew I wasn't happy. Just like when I became boring and when I was not in Denver every other weekend, I was like, you know, sitting home. Uh, maybe I'd go to film streams by myself and see a movie, which I did a lot. You know, they're like, only our mom goes to a movie by herself, but I loved it, you know, but they knew I was happy. You know, they, 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 they will make comments about, you know, just about mom and the, you know, the, then their friends would come over and mom was always there and I always knew their friends and did I hang out with them? Did I, sure I made them food or bought them food, but I think that happiness or that contentness is apparent to everybody out from the outside. Right. I agree. I agree because you can be busy and you can be projecting unhappiness right? as much as you can be boring and ordinary and be projecting all the happiness in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think it's different for everybody. I think everybody has their. So Amy, style. I'm looking, uh, I may, you know, me, if anybody's watching, I'm always making little notes because in fact, I'm dying to ask Amy what she's reading right now. So answer, can you answer that random question? What are you reading right now? Oh, funny. I, I don't know. I, I can look about. So I get my books on my iPad. Mm -hmm. And so I never know the title. Like I pick it out at the beginning and it's like, I'm sorting through prime reading. It's right. like for a library and I'm right. just like, oh, that sounds good. So I never know what I'm reading, but I can probably, I'm back on my iPad here, right? And I was reading last night. Let's see. I am reading a book called lying next to me and lying is like oh so it's like a thriller it's like some sort of mystery yes okay. yeah, yeah i like definitely. my prime first reads i need to get back into those <laughs> um, but but making notes we you know just for everyone who's listening amy and i have to stop ourselves because we before we start recording we catch up a little bit usually oh gosh you know fill up our coffee, get our water, yeah. <laughs> those kind of things. And then we start talking about the topic and we have to tell ourselves, stop, you know, we can't, let's wait till we record and save <laughs> that. So one thing Amy started to tell me that I want to hear about is when you talked about um, somebody following you on LinkedIn and saying oh, what it yeah. appeared, because yeah, yeah, I love that. I want to hear more about that. Oh yeah. I totally forgot about that. She, um, it was last night I was meeting with somebody and she told me, she's like, you've, ha you've got a lot going on. And I was, I was looking at her and I'm like, what are, what are you talking about? <laughs> and she follows me on LinkedIn mm -hmm. and you know, um, I've been very intentional about sharing things right. on LinkedIn for the last, well, probably since we started the podcast was one of the instigators of trying to get a weekly post, at least minimum out there. And, you know, so I've been very intentional about that. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, I really don't have a lot going on. I have a few things that are really, um, that are foundational of where I want to be in five or 10 years. The podcast is one of them. I've been working on a book. That's another one. But these are like 
a lot of internal things that have been in the works, well, the podcast just since April, but the book was a year and a half ago. But anyway, her comment that you've got a lot going on, I realized that I have a highlight reel going on LinkedIn of all of this stuff and people think I have a lot going on. And in reality, so yeah, I was going to say, put, compare that to reality. Reality is I have a few things going on, but there's still a lot of quiet time, which is okay. I'm not, I'm enjoying the moment and where I am right now. And, um, but it's still pretty quiet, <laughs> but it was just her perception was that I was really busy and had a lot going on. But back to social media. And I always say that the Christmas letters of the past then social yeah. media, what, what gets pushed out is what people perceive. And again, you know, you might be thinking them like LinkedIn is a great example. We, we've talked about that and I've been doing the same thing, trying to push myself to write an article here and there, or spend more time on it. But it hasn't been extra time because um, I spent a lot of time thinking about it or maybe writing things down and not executing on it. And even our podcasts, actually, I used to have more time with friends having conversations like these over a happy hour, over lunch. And I spend less time with our podcasts discussing things than I did pre-moving to Durango and pre-COVID with friends. So I actually feel like it's that I have more time, but it's just so interesting back to perception versus reality. And then I will tie it back to my point on people who really spend time with you, like Trevor or like my kids, they know they can separate those two, but then you have that outer circle that we're communicating through, yeah, through social media, through the blogs that, that have a different perception. You know, if you follow me on Facebook, you would think all I do is hike in the mountains right? And, <laughs> yeah. because that's what I post. Right? right. And they're great pictures, but there's a lot of in between. And because we live right here, sometimes I'm just walking my dog in the neighborhood, which I do every day. And I live in the mountains. So the pictures look great, but yes, they're beautiful. Yes. I spend time in the mountains. I mean, people ask me, do you work? And it's like, I, yeah, I really, actually, I work more than I want to, to be honest with you, but that's not the perception. And then I do challenge myself. And I, I, so this is my question for you too, Amy, do you, when she asked you that, did it take you aback and say, am I pushing out too much? Am I giving the wrong perception? Because that's how I feel when people are like, all you do is drink and hike. And I'm like, maybe I should stop. And then I'm like, you know what? I, I don't, I don't need to prove my reality to them, you know, the, the, you're only going to get so much out of that. My reality is my kids and my husband and my parents and my brothers and my dog, right. and my father-in-law, that's they, my real. Right. What they think or not even what they think, how they feel about what you're doing with your time, right? I guess. <laughs> the <laughs> only thing, Amy, we were on vacation. I posted a picture and they were taster cups. We did a flight and Garrett and I split them. The way the cups, they looked, they, they had the look of a regular, what I say, uh -huh. round cup. So when Garrett took the picture, you would have thought I had eight regular beers in front of me. They're tasters. Uh -huh. Their tasters, like two ounces, three <laughs> yeah. ounces. I right. had more people that are like, you drank those all by yourself. Well, first of all, I did share with Garrett, but it was a taste. It was tasters. Right, right, right. <laughs> but I found myself back to this. Like, I'm like, should I take that post down? And I, I, I'm like apologizing. Like they look, we're, and I'm like, Sandy, stop. <laughs> don't worry about what people think it's not and it's nothing bad they're doing it's just how it looks and right. you know what my liver is fine we're all good yeah, yeah yeah well I will tell you there was that piece about wondering if you're posting too much or putting like it there is that question mark and that's always a question mark for me since I started my business especially because um I don't mind posting personal stuff on personal pages, but business stuff and, pr and promoting myself. Because when I first started my business, it was promoting me. Now I have that shift of I'm promoting my team more and trying to get them, you know, get them work and the business more than me. Um, but that is a hard thing that, that promoting yourself. So do you self-doubt yourself sometimes that you are doing too much? Yes, all the time. 
<laughs> especially when I get comments like that. And I'm like, all right. So, but then I'm also like, I'm comfortable doing it. So I, you know, whatever, but I don't, I do want to make sure that I'm portraying what's really happening too. So I'm right. always trying to um, I have that balance of what reality is and make sure or try, it's really hard not to make it look like a highlight reel. So right. that's the, the two because, and if you looked back at my post, like my Instagram stuff, you know, most of it from March through probably June is me on the patio with a drink. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't much else going on. So maybe I am celebrating a little too much that stuff's going on. Okay. You know what, Amy, on that yeah. note, let's take a little selfie here to show that we're doing something other than, we're not drinking, by the way. Oh, I do have coffee, but you no alcohol. Coffee. <laughs> I, I love I'm not good at I this, but I think I've got it. Hard to do those photos. <laughs> got it. There we go. Right. Well, that will go on social media. Okay. No matter how good or bad it is. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so let's dig into some questions. And I'm just going to say really quick, uh, you can email us at yourrealyourideal at gmail.com if you want to ask us questions or suggest topics for us to talk about. So here are a few questions that we've gotten. Um, one of them is... The, or the first one is, does a full calendar mean a full life? Hmm. What do you think, Sandy? No. no you heard I'm... me. It's because of my pet peeve. But <laughs> I think it's something we all fall into, though. Yeah, but so, I think you should think about that a little bit longer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's so easy to fill the calendar and, and again, back to, we all have a calendar we follow. Actually, I would tell you, my kids only put the very important things on it. They more, they're more adaptable and they live in the moment. Um, and they really cherish their open time and spontaneity, which I will give to millennials too, because they tend to be a little bit more free spirited. I think we are the generation of the calendar, to be honest with you. Um, but then I look back at my mom and you know what my mom would always do? It wasn't about our calendar forward. What my mom has, they aren't journals. In the neatest, most beautiful little cursive handwriting, my mom has a calendar. One of those calendars you get at the bank, flip up for every year. I'd have to, I'm going to ask her how far back it goes. And she writes down her days as they close. A lot of times it's the, went to the doctor, here was the temperature, did a walk. It might not be the memories, but it's the very ordinary things, very ordinary things, but they spur the memories. It's the very ordinary things every day of her life. So her calendar wasn't so much going forward, but she has calendars of, and it, it, I, yeah, Amy, I'm going to ask her for these. I'm going to go through these. I forgot about this. This conversation reminded me of this, but her full calendar was the ordinary days of the past. And yeah. my mom is super special. So I, I, I'm all over this now. So, I love that. That's a bit journaling, using the calendar as a journal and just documenting the ordinary. I love documenting it. Documenting the ordinary. And yeah. it always was. It wasn't, oh, Sandy hit a home run today in softball. Right. Or, I mean, maybe Sandy it would be more like uh, Sandy had her follow up ear infection doctor's appointment in Sioux City. You know, that was the kind of stuff. Yeah. I love that. So I'm going to agree with you that a full calendar does not mean a full life. A, a full calendar just means that you're busy doing things. It does not mean that you're doing the things that are important and a priority to you. It just means that you're busy doing stuff. I love it. I think uh, an empty calendar doesn't mean an empty life either. It's like the opposite of that. It's uh, an empty calendar means that you're you're open to doing things that can come up some spontaneity. You know, Tom and I went for a hike a couple of weekends ago and we don't typically do that. There's not a lot of, actually but there is on social media. There is some hope hiking places, but um, uh, we went for a hike and he had asked me like that morning, he's like, you want to go for a hike? And I'm like, sure. And so we went and I was like, oh, it's so nice just to have an open afternoon. It was a beautiful day. It was a great hike, beautiful park. So, um, 
an empty calendar doesn't mean an empty life. Right. Yeah. And not always a full one. Some people, uh, some people actually block out a lot of time and fill their calendar with that. You know, it depends on, I guess it depends on what's on your calendar. How about that? Because Very good. The back to my comment about not telling people, people do a very good job of the act of blocking out time on their calendar so they don't have to apologize and carefully map out their time for the things they want. So I guess it just depends what's on your calendar. And I think and that is doing. a really good point. You're very good point. I like that. So a full calendar could mean a full life. <laughs> I guess maybe we're wrong. We're back. Know, we're yeah. That's a full <laughs> circle. We come back around. People <laughs> said, "Oh, well, maybe it could." <laughs> my so mom's maybe. full. Wait, think about it. Another angle. My mom's full calendar. It's in the past, but that's a full life. Oh, oh trick question. <laughs> I love it. Okay. All right. So we don't have any solid answers on this. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> continued. All right. I love that we're not taking these seriously too, because I mean, we are, but there's some funniness in this too. <laughs> it could go either way. All right. The next question we had, what are some ideas and ways to celebrate the ordinary when it just feels boring? That's a good one. Uh, so I, I like this idea of journaling. Mm -hmm. um, I like that. I haven't done that. Um, I also like just having the conversations with people of the ordinary and being authentic and uh, about what's really happening. You know, I'm thinking about and I know all my conversations go back to my mom, but I That's spent great. some well, time. Me too. You know, we should, we should have one session that has both of our moms on here. Cause we, I know. <laughs> has there ever been an episode we haven't referred to our mothers? I know. That's, I don't think so. I don't know that there has. I keep telling a story. I'm going to take a card down. So I'm going to read this card when we're done. Okay. So, um, I'm just thinking of when I was talking to my mom, when I was visiting with her, I was telling her a lot of just ordinary stuff mm -hmm. and it was all very engaging. She was very interested. She's so sweet and, um, and vice versa. She was telling me ordinary stuff about what's happening with her friends and her life and how she's spending her days. And I really enjoyed it because I felt like I really got to know her more than just the you know, her telling me I love it. highlights. So here's a card, which is perfect. And it came from my friend and aunt Kathy, who always has the best cards. She sent it to me for mother's day, but I keep it on my wall and it says all that I am, I owe to my mother and it's Abraham Lincoln. So how about that? Oh my gosh. I have a dish towel that my mom gave me and it was, it's, I should go grab it. I can't remember what it says, but it's something like, I'm just like my mother or something. <laughs> so the question about boring, first thing I thought about when you said that question is when's the last time I was bored, but yet that's because I feel it right away. I act pretty fast. I would tell you that what are some ideas to celebrate the ordinary? For me, it's usually relationships or people. I'll start if I'm Gosh, I hate to use the word bored, but is that pride that I don't like to use bored? But if I have a little downtime, I find myself starting a group text with my high school friends. Um, I find myself finding a picture and sending it to my brothers and starting a dialogue that I might not be with them. Uh, random uh, email to a friend saying, let's do a FaceTime. I would tell you that I usually fill it with people and I think about relationships that I need to nurture that somebody I haven't talked to in a while. And with technology, we have so many different ways. I tell you that's probably my go-to. And the other thing I'd say, and it kind of goes back to that V cubed value. If people will say, well, I hear what I think my values are and what do I value and what do I love to, you know, what, what, what do I, what, what do I, um, what is the core of my being? One great exercise is think back to when you were, or what do you, what do I do best? You know, what, what are those things? I, I always tell them if you're trying to find out like the deep parts of your value or what you value, go back to when you were a child 
and think about when, not only when you're bored, but when you're the most happy, what did you do to fill your time? What did you do to, on those days, because you had no other interruptions, what did you innately go to, whether it be people, whether it be things, whether it be solving problems, what, what toys did you play with? But it's a great exercise to go through because what you'll find is it will come back to those things you find joyful today, which kind of goes back to this uh, question of kind of digging into, you're going to gravitate to those things that bring, bring you the most happiness and you value the most in your life. And if I went back as a kid, it was relationships too. If I was bored, I went and hung out with my grandparents. I, you know, I found people and usually it was grandparents. I would watch my mom sewing. I would, I would gravitate toward people, which is very similar to what I do today. Isn't that funny? So going through that exercise in my mind, I was thinking about what I did when I was bored because we used to have long summers. We lived out in the country. We didn't have like we had three channels and they were boring during the day. You know, it's not like they had cartoons on all day. And um, I did a lot of rearranging my bedroom. Did you is- really see Amy? Bingo. It's a great exercise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And reading books. Because and you're good I- at reading books. Oh, the library yeah. books. Uh, and not yes. even library. I like to buy them too. I liked everything about a book. And yeah. So it, it is a great exercise because when you're a child and you have all the time in the world, you have no other, think about that time, like a 12 year old or however age, you, nobody's going to choose something they hate to do. You're going to gravitate to what you value, what brings you happiness, what you're good at. And it's a great exercise to connect with what you do today. And, and just that. thinking that through, I used to have music on all the time and I'm just going to say, I don't have music on a lot now and I should probably, I do enjoy it on Saturdays. A lot of times I turn it on in the house, but I don't think about it during the week. Do you want to Yeah. Get a vinyl, get a record player. I pick up records, vinyls. Oh, there. Yeah. I, I even have Christmas music that my mom used to play when I was little that I'll find at a flea market. Yeah. I have grown to this big vine and there's nothing better for me because I'm sentimental too than to put on records and play and you can get new ones too. It's amazing. But having a record player is very joyful. Okay. So this is a good tip for people to go through that exercise Mm -hmm. because winter's coming. We're going to be hunkering down and I love this, uh, remembering back to your childhood and what you did when you were bored, what you came up with to do to fill your time and going back to that. And what was interesting is then I thought about my brothers, Mm -hmm. exact same thing. If I thought of, they were completely different, but what they, I have pictures of my brother, Matt, looking at maps, you know, like, and he loved the globe and the map of the world. And he loves data points. You know, he'll, if I tell him I'm going somewhere, he'll know the (laughs) <laughs> he will be sending me their average weather, their population, you know, he'll know five facts about them. And he's, and he loves that kind of stuff. And he's always been like that. And that's what he, gra- you know, did I gravitate toward maps? Heck no. Right. I love that. That's great. It's an exercise for us. I love that exercise. I love hearing what people say. And then a hundred percent of the time, there's that aha moment that it totally relates to the things they already love and do well today, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And part of this was celebrating the ordinary. Um, One of the things that I've noticed in the last few months is I have quiet time and uh, like everybody's still asleep. Tom's out for a walk in the morning. It's early in the morning. I'm up and it's completely quiet. And sometimes I'm really quick to pick up my iPad and read the newspaper. Sometimes I'm quick to turn on the news, but sometimes I just sit there and I sit there in the quiet with my coffee and I don't meditate. Like I don't, but it's just a time to sit with even my thoughts. Even if it's not it, meditating, if you're sitting with your thoughts, it's a quiet time. It's a quiet time. It's a very, um, the days that I do it, I don't do it every day, but the days that I do it, it may only be five or 10 minutes, but it is such um, a gift that I give to myself. Uh, there's mornings that I pick up my iPad quick to read, start reading the newspaper. And I'm like, 
maybe I should wait. And then I'm like, oh no, I'm going to read it really good. <laughs> and then my day gets away from me. But um, those mornings that I do take that time, it's, it's really nice just to be able to spend some time processing things that are in my head, Love you know. It. And I yeah. do love, I love our podcast time. It's very Zen for me. Just, me just to tell you, I perused my email just to see if there was an emergency and before we had this, cause I read before and then, you know, you got to take care of the dog and yeah. take a shower. And, uh, I saw one and I told him I'll be on a call. And as soon as I'm done, I'll take care of you. I totally ignored the other ones. And if I look on my phone right now, I am up to, uh, 37 emails, two texts, three messages, um, through teams, <laughs> two through there. But even when I woke up this morning, because I didn't want to burden my brain, because when I had that quiet time, you, you have to be intentional, like you saying your iPad. When I woke up this morning, I didn't even look at my phone. Cause I'm like, if it's an emergency, it's you know, 536 in the morning. Right. If, if it was an emergency, they would have called me or the text, right? I would have gotten a text. There was no text at that point. Somebody would have worked really hard to get a hold of me. I'm yeah. not going to look at that because my brain is going to start thinking about these things and the people I need to respond to. And I'm not going to start my day until I do this two hours of reading. And then back to our talking in the podcast, I really wanted to think about our conversation and be intentional with not thinking about these emails. Again, I perused it for what was the emergency. And it's a great exercise for everyone, whether it be your email, your phone, because to, you can give yourself quiet time, but you have to figure out ways to quiet your brain where yes. you don't feel guilty that you're not answering all the pings and the notifications hitting you. Yeah. And it's also good to have boundaries around stuff like that. You know, I got a phone call last night from one of my clients and it was to reschedule a, an appointment for next week. Not, not a big deal, nothing urgent. But I saw that call come through and I ignored it because I'm like, it's evening. I'm not answering that call. They'll right. leave a message. And, you know, this morning I resolved it and it was fine. Not a big deal. But it was um, a good boundary to have. One more so. thing. And I need, know we need to go, but I think this is a good tidbit too. And maybe it's just me. I also, one thing I really challenge myself on, it, it's kind of like the uh, talk less, smile more if I'm in the grocery line and you talked about your client, I'm getting ready to go to bed. I get an email. My gut reaction is to answer that email right away or that text. That's my gut reaction. Amy, I would tell you 90% of the time I haven't fully taken in that email. I haven't read it in its completion. It, it's not a good idea to just immediately answer without being respectful of taking it all in and also understanding boundaries. And so I really challenge myself to not get in that habit of, if it's a quick text, that's yes, no, absolutely. But if it is more than two sentences, put it away until you know you're going to sit down, thoughtfully read it, and thoughtfully answer, and don't do it on your phone. Do it yeah. on your computer. But that's a great lesson to myself that I have to remind myself because my knee-jerk reaction, because I'm bored in the grocery line. I'll use that example. And I'll look through and I'll want to answer all these emails. It's like, don't, yeah. because most of the time I haven't either processed it or read the whole thing. I like the idea of reading through them and then going back to them because that you have that what's going on in your what's head on? and you give your self some time to process. It's kind of like your example and the talk less, smile more. Um, of the 10 breaths, like take yeah. or count to 10. Is that what it was? Count to 10. Count to 10. Another one was uh, pick up at the time people, when somebody gave me the advice, there was a lot of diet Coke drinking and like straws and there's still straws, but people are drinking more water and sparkling water. But they said, slowly take a sip of your, take a sip of your diet Coke, take a sip out of your straw. And cause it kind of is that 10 second, but another one before you talk like, you know, I should go like this, you know, <laughs> take a sip <laughs> take a sip because that rather than counting because sometimes you can get impatient with counting you're doing something else that occupies your brain so that was yeah, you can say, one two three four five six seven eight nine, ten. okay I'm ready <laughs> my turn my turn <laughs> my turn my turn <laughs> yeah exactly all right so final question what's the real and what's the ideal in these situations well the uh, real is we love our mothers <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
Yes. Um, yes. True. True. Chuck. Um, the other thing I would say the real is, um, the time is what it is right now. Like there's no, um, there's nothing that's going to be changing in the next few months that we're all of a sudden going to have full calendars in the evenings and we're going to be going to theaters. And, you know, I, I don't know about theaters, but I know like Broadway is closed till June of 2021. So we're kind of in this spot for the next six months or so that we probably won't have full calendars. So that's kind of the real and realistic of where we're at. And then the real is it's winter. It it's winter. every year. It's winter. It's if winter. you're happy and you're not going to be looking for houses in warmer places. We know that, right? right? I know. I'm not. I have no Prior plan episode, everyone. <laughs> not this year. I think I'm good. I'll tell you in February. <laughs> that was the happiness factor episode, I think. Yeah. But uh, that's the real. And the other real is, I think sometimes back to filling our time, our kids are grown. You know, you still have one at home. The real is I don't have kids at home. My ordinary days have changed. And the, some reels are like the pandemic that we're never going to forget 2020. And other reels are our life changes as we get older and who we have around us. And the ideal is taking what's been given to us and making it our best and filling it with filling the calendar with the things that we want to fill it with and that our ordinary days bring us happiness. Right. It's like making lemonade out of lemons. Yeah. You just have to roll with it and do the best you can. And this is going to lead to our wrap question because okay. I, I was going to say, add something else, but um, it's getting cold here and we have everything shut down. What are your ordinary plans for your spare time this winter? Do you have any I, ordinary plans? You know what? I've got the sewing machine now. My mom is a oh. wonderful seamstress and I grew up with my mom having this amazing sewing room, making our clothes. And it gives me joy to get the sewing machine out. I actually made a really cute skirt um, that I wore one of our last trips. Uh, but my big thing right now, I know it should be COVID masks, but they seem to be everywhere. I've been making a lot of dog bandanas. So uh, in this winter, my mom wants to start working on, and I'm hoping to see her this winter, uh, the quilts that have, she, we've collected the kids' t-shirts and we're going to start making quilts for the boys. Uh, I know that a lot of times it's a high school graduation gift. My feeling is I think my kids need to be a little bit older so they can cherish it a little bit more and it doesn't have to go through a dorm room or a frat house. So we'll start <laughs> with the oldest and work our way down. So I would tell you sewing. I'm looking forward that's to sewing. Great. Yeah, that's really good. So mine, you know, I'm just going to say you inspired this one is photos. I'm still like, it's my winter project of really out all of my digital photos. And then I, um, with my second child, uh, when she graduated Taylor, I created a scrapbook for her nice. of all of her artwork from grade school through, and it's just photos. And I scanned in, you know, her paintings and stuff nice. like that. And then I tossed pictures in it. It's just a Shutterfly book. And I did it for Cameron too. I didn't think of it for Reagan. So I didn't make her one. So I didn't think of it till Taylor or somebody told me about it. I probably didn't think of this. I made one for Cameron. So I need to make one for Trevor this year. And I think I might try to make one for Reagan too, because I've got all of her stuff scanned. I just haven't made a book out of it. I love and I it. Still, um, then I can check those two things off my big to-do list. I can organize my photos and then this will be a, uh, a good winter to get all that stuff done. I hope. Wonderful. I can't wait. Share some of the pictures. I'm going to look, you know, I'm going to, after talking about, it, I'm going to read my journals. And when my mom and I do the quilts together, I want her to pull out her calendars. That will be fun. Oh, that'll be good. Yes. She'll have to, some of them she might hear, hear uh, you've never seen somebody with such uh, wonderful handwriting, but she can write the smallest in a little space that you could ever see. Maybe it was all the calendar practice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and also I am going to say, I'm going to start journaling at least one sentence a day. I'm going to find, I'm gonna I think keep I journaling. notebooks I'll pull out and I'll start uh, working on them. 
Nice. Well, my dog is whining, so I think I need to take him for a walk because our timing looks like it's perfect. It's perfect timing. Your dog is. Everybody heard the dog. If you heard the whining, it wasn't me or Amy. If you're listening, (laughs) it was my beautiful dog, Zeke, who is uh, the most spoiled boy that I have. So. (laughs) And there is nothing wrong with that. (laughs) All right. Okay, Amy. We'll talk next week. Thank you. All right. See you. Bye. Bye.